my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this problem out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving problems having to do with the notion of subtraction of fractions. Subtraction of fractions. We are on page number 19. On, the, on that page, page number 19, you will see sample problems 1 through 10. We finished doing 1 through 6 yesterday. Today we will pick up from number 7. After having done these 10 problems that you see there, that's 10 sample problems, if you feel that you need more practice, that you need to need, uh, need to, you need to work a little bit more on these uh, these uh, these type of questions. You can watch these two videos. T is day four. T is day four and basic math in the series of basic math. Watch day number forty nine, where we did some more problems having to do with the addition and subtraction of fractions. As you know, the math on the T's is very similar to what you will encounter on HESI. Let's get going. Number seven. Here we have twenty five in the seventh minus twelve and five seventh. Twenty five and a seventh minus twelve and five seventh. Now if you look at the fractions here, if you just look at the fractions here, we can immediately see we can immediately see that one seventh here is less than five seventh. We're not gonna be we're not gonna be able to subtract one five seventh from one seventh. So what are we gonna do? We're going to have to do some manipulation, we're going to have to do some borrowing. So here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do is this. We're going to write out 25. We're going to write out 25 as 24 plus 1. 24 plus 1 is 25. And then we have a 7. So this is the first quantity that is given to us. Now this one that you see in the middle, this one that you see in the middle can be written as, so we have 24 plus a 1, which can be written as 7 7. 7 7 are 1. 7 over 7 is 1. And then we have plus 1 7. In other words, in other words, 25 and a 7th is same as 24. 24 and 7 plus 1, which is 8 7. That's what we're going to do. We're going to replace 25, 25 and a 7th. We're going to replace 25 and a 7th by 24 and 8 7th. So let's do that here. 25 becomes 24. In other words, in other words, we borrow one. We borrow one from 25. We borrow one from 25, having realized that one is simply 7 7. So now 7 7 plus a 7 is 8 7 minus 12 and 5 7. The rest is very simple, very easy, very straightforward. Let's do it out here. We need the room. So now we can simply subtract the whole numbers, 24 minus a 12 is just a 12. And now we can take care of our fraction, 8 7 minus a, 8 7 minus a 5 7, 8 7 minus a 5 7, 8 minus 5 is 3, 7. Voilà, that's your answer. The final answer is 12 and 3 7, 25 and a 7 minus 12 and 5 7 turns out is equal to 12 and 3 7. Let's go on to number 8. Number 8, we need the room obviously. We have 30, we have 30 and a half minus 13 and 3 quarter. We have the same exact problem as before exact same problem as before. If you look at the fractions here, here we have a half and here we have a three quarter. We know half is less than three quarter. We cannot subtract three quarter from a half. We're going to have to do some manipulation. Same as before. Same as before. We're going to borrow, we're going to borrow one from 30. 30 can be written as 29 plus 1. 29 plus 1 is 30. And then we have one half. But 1, in turn, can be written as 2 over 2. Why 2 over 2? Because 2 halves make a 1. 1 half and 2 halves. 2 halves make a 1. That's what this says. 2 over 2. 
So now we have 29 plus 2 halves plus 1 half, 2 halves plus 1 half is 3 halves and a 29. Now 3 halves, 3 halves is more than 3 quarters. 3 halves is more than 3 quarters. Now we can take care of our subtraction that we have to do. So that's what we're going to do now. So first we're going to rewrite this thing 30 and a half. We're going to write that as 29 and 2 third. 29 and uh, 3 halves rather. 29 and 3 halves. But before we worry about that, let's finish this thing. So this is 3 halves. This is 3 halves. So it becomes 29 and 3 halves minus 13 and 3 quarter. 13 and 3 quarter. Now we can do our fractions. 3 halves minus the 3 quarter, which is very simple, very straightforward. 3 halves minus the 3 quarter. This one has a denominator of 4, this one has a denominator of 2. How can we convert this 2 into a 4? Multiply top and bottom by 2. And then we have 6, 2 times 3 is 6. In other words, 6 quarters, 6 quarters is same as, 6 quarters is same as 3 halves. Which makes sense because a half and a half and a half, if you have 3 halves, if you have three halves, then each half is made up of each half is made up of two quarters. So this half has two quarters, this half has two quarters, and this half has two quarters. Three quarters should make six halves, which makes this exactly what it says here. Six half, uh, rather, three quarters should make three quart. I, I messed it all up. Let me start again. I, I, I mucked it all up completely big time. We have three halves. We have three halves. Let me start all over again. It's very important that one pays attention. I lost concentration. We have three halves. One half, two halves, three halves, three halves. This half is made up of two quarters. This half is made up of two quarters. This half is made up of three quarters. In other words, if you have three halves, three halves the same as six quarters. Six quarters. Three halves. Three halves the same as six quarters. Two times three is six. Two times two is four. So this, this quantity here, this quantity here is six quarters, which makes perfect sense. Two quarters, two quarters, two quarters, three halves make six quarters. Now we have six quarters here minus a three quarter. We can take care of it very easily. Six quarter minus three quarter is simply three quarters. It's simply three quarters. We're almost done. That's it. Now we can take care of it. Here we have a whole number 29 minus a 13. 29 minus 13, we can figure it out here. 29 minus a 13 is simply six, 16. So this whole quantity, 29 minus 13 is 16, and we just found out that 3 halves minus a 3 quarter, 3 halves minus a 3 quarter, we just found out is simply 3 quarters. So the final answer happens to be 16, 16 and 3 quarters. 16 and 3 quarters is the final answer. Let's do number 9. Let's do number 9. It's very important that we pay attention because it's very easy to make mistakes, it's very easy to uh, lose your concentration as I just did, yeah, which is which is not acceptable, you understand? Now the reason why I leave these errors and these boo-boos in the videos, I could very easily retape the whole thing and you would have never known that I had made a mistake the first time. The reason I leave them in there so you can see how easy it is to make a mistake, where people tend to make a mistake, and there is nothing to fret about, there is nothing to get we uh, to, to vex about, there is nothing to get irritated about, just redo it. Don't get worked up, do you understand? Don't get worked up. Just give me one second here, let's see if we actually learned this particular word. I don't want to make a fuss about it if we haven't learned it. We haven't learned it. But since I brought it up, we're going to talk about that. Here is the word. Wax is the word, which means to get irritated, to get annoyed, to get worked up. Don't get worked up. If something is waxing you, wax is a verb. What's the adjective of wax? What's the adjective of wax? Adjective of wax is something that waxes one. Something that waxes one is said to be vexatious. Leave. I'm not sure about the spelling. Vexatious. We'll cover this word in our vocabulary video soon. Since since it's, since I brought since it came up, I will make sure that we cover it in our vocabulary video in the near near future. There was supposed to be 100 vocabulary videos. So far, I'm at 75. So we'll cover it in, in the future. Let's do next one. Number number nine. Number nine. The 
the penultimate one, the second to the last one. Penultimate, as you know, we have, you'll use it all. We use it all the time. It's just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. Let's do our penultimate problem. We learned about penultimate long time ago on day number eleven. Day eleven. If you just type in vocabulary words day eleven, you will find the video where we learned about penultimate number nine. Let's take a look at it. In number nine, we have a we have a board which we are told is seven and seven eight feet long. We are further told that for our work we need six and a half. We are further told that for our work we need six and a half. Let me read the question verbatim. Let me read the question word for word. It says Ellen is making a table. The table will table will be six and a half feet long. So we need six and a half feet long board. It turns out, uh, turns out, and they tell it, they go on to tell us that it's four feet wide, which doesn't really concern us. We are we are interested in the length. We are told that the board for the table is seven and seven eight feet long and four feet wide because it's the same width. We don't have to worry about the four feet. How much of the board uh, does Alan need to cut? It's very simple. The, all they're asking you in a very roundabout way is how much is seven and seven eight minus six and six and a half. The problem here is that this fraction has a denominator of eight, but this fraction here has a denominator of only two. How can we convert this two into an eight? It's very simple. Multiply this half by four over four. In other words, in other words, half, half. If you multiply by four over four, four over four, what we're saying is that what we are asserting here is the claim that we're making is that half is same as four eighth. Of course it is. Four divided by eight. If you were to reduce it, it becomes half. So here we have four eighth. So this quantity is four eighth. This is a seven eighth. Seven eighth minus four eighth is three eighth. We're done. It's very simple. Seven, seven minus six. Seven minus six is one, and seven eighth. Minus four eight is just three eight. The answer is he needs to cut off three and uh, he needs to cut off one and three eight feet. One and three eight feet. I'm not sure it's going to be one eight one and three eight feet or one and three eight foot, because one is just one foot. It's not a plural. But what about three eight? Does it become plural? I'm not sure about it. Let's not get into nitty gritty. Okay, he's going to cut off one and three eight foot or feet, it's up to you, I don't know. Let's do the last one, number 10. Number 10, we are told that, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this per person's name, uh, we need one and two-third cup of milk. We need one and two-third cup of milk, or rather we have one and two-third cup of milk, and we are going to use three quarter of the cup. We're going to use three quarter of the cup. The question is, how much milk will we have left over? Well, let's find out. Essentially, they are asking for is how much is one and two third minus three quarters. Let's find out. Sure. Obviously, we cannot subtract three quarters from two third because three quarter is more than two third. So we have to do something here with the one. This one that we see here, this one that we see here, can be written as three over three. So that's one is just three over three plus a two over three. In other words, one and two third, because one is made up of three thirds, a third and a third and a third, three thirds make a one. So we have three thirds, we have three thirds plus a two third, it is a five third. It is a five third minus three quarters. What we have to figure out is this quantity, five third minus three quarters. Since it's getting very low here, we're going to do it on the top. So we have five third minus three quarters. Since three and a four, since three and a four in the denominator have nothing in common at all, the easiest, the simplest, the quickest, the most efficient way to making of making sure that we have the common same denominator, we have the common denominator, is to simply introduce a three here and introduce a four here. Let's introduce three here. Let's multiply the bottom by three. If you can multiply the bottom by three. We must multiply the top by three because three over three is one. Three over three is one, and therefore we had three quarters to begin with, and three quarters times one is still three quarters because three over three is just one. Let's introduce four here. If you're going to multiply the bottom by four, we must multiply the top by four because four over four is one, 
essentially we are multiplying 5 thirds by 1. So therefore we are not changing the value of it. 5 third still remains 5 third. Here we have 4 times 3, here we have 4 times 3, we have the same denominator in both fractions, we have the common denominator, so we can take care of the numerator now. 4 times 5 is 20, and over, over there we have 12, 4 times 3, minus 3 times 3 is 9, times 4 times 3 which is 12. So we have 20 12 minus 9 12. 20 12 minus a 9 12 is simply 20 minus 9 over 12, 20 minus 9 is 11. So we end up with 11 and 11 12. We end up with 11 12 and since 11 12, since 12 is less than, since 11 is less than 12, since 11 is less than 12, it is already a proper fraction. It is not an improper fraction so we don't have to worry about, we needn't worry about converting this into a mixed number. And also the fact that 11 and 12, 11 and 12 have no factors in common, we also don't need to worry about reducing it. It is in its most reduced form, it is in its most simplest form, 11 over 12 is just 11 over 12. The answer is 11 over 12. Had it been improper fraction, had the top been more than the bottom, we would have, we would have had to convert this into a mixed fraction, or had we found out that the top number and the bottom number have a common factor, then we would have had to reduce it. We have to do neither here. We are done. I will see you tomorrow where we will start the new topic, the topic of multiplying fraction, multiplication of fraction. We will start tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.